Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Rachel, and welcome to this week's Leather Fun Friday. So I asked on social media a couple weeks ago what you guys wanted to see for these videos or what kind of was the most requested videos. Well, a lot of people said they wanted more on tooling. So I decided to make a two-part video, um, basically the basics of tooling. Today I'm going to be talking about the tools that you need um, in order to tool, and then next week I will kind of show you the basics of carving uh, with a swivel knife, <clears throat> excuse me, and tooling. Also, please know I am getting over a cold if, if that's why I sound a little stuffed up. And that is why if you notice on the Wednesday DIY video this week that I did not show my face because I felt like crap. But anyway, so I will go ahead and go through the products that you need, the tools and everything, and then I will tell you guys where I got them, kind of how much the prices are of what I can remember on them, and then, yeah, and then stay tuned for next week because I will actually use the tools and show you how to use them and all of that fun stuff. So let's get started. So for tooling, the basic, basic, basic tool that you're going to need is a swivel knife, and that is how you're going to do all of your cutting and all of your carving. So this is, this was not my first swivel knife, but I actually just bought it because it was really cheap. This is basically the, um, the basic swivel knife that you can get from Tandy. And you can buy, purchase swivel knives from pretty much any leather place like Tandy, Weaver, Springfield Leather, stuff like that. Um, and then if you get into tooling more and you want to, um, you know, further your skills and get a better product, there are smaller makers who actually hand make them and make their own swivel knives. So this is the basic one. It comes with, let me see if I can get this to zoom in for you guys. There we go. So it just has the metal shaft here. Um, this swivels like this. This is what you rest your finger on and is adjustable. This one, this knife is obviously too tall for me. I have little hands and it comes with this straight blade here, which you can also take out. There's a little screw and it is um, a removable. So I personally like using the straight blade. Um, I know Tandy and like Springfield, they sell, um, they do sell a angled blade, which is more for like details, and then they sell a ceramic blade. I personally like the straight blade. I like an actual smaller one than this, like when I'm doing details, because a lot of time when I'm carving, I'm doing really small pictures, like on a nose band or a cheek piece for a head stall, and so I, I'm not tooling like a big area. So, but I really like the straight blade. Um, that's just my favorite because I just like it. I don't really like the angled blade and I haven't really played much with the ceramic blade. So anyway, this basic swivel knife from Tandy, I think retail costs maybe around $20, I think. Um, this one's just very, very basic, very um, cheap, honestly. And um, it doesn't have a lot of um, the amenities or it definitely will not cut like a professional one, but it is a very, very good starter one. The second one, and this is the one that I use, um, it is, it kind of used to be Tandy's Pro Line, but then they got their actual Pro Line. Um, but this, uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but this is like a step up basically, and this is the knife that I use. Um, let me see if I can get it to zoom in here. Come on. There we go, focus. Okay, so as you see, this has the, um, the top here that uh, the little saddle, I think that's what they're, I don't know exactly what that part's called, but it's what you rest your finger on when you hold it. And then I like this one because it has the padding here, um, for you to rest your fingers on when you're holding it. And then this one also comes with that straight blade. Now, I do have to say, like I said, I, I tool a lot of smaller things, so this one actually is a little bit too big. I would like this blade if it was probably about half or three quarters of this size. But if you are, they do sell straight blades that are smaller, um, excuse me, um, but you have to get those from like the makers that actually make their swivel knives and sell them. They have a lot more blade varieties. So if you are, if you start out with this, you move up to this, which this is where I'm at. I'm obviously, I'm definitely not a pro. Um, 
there are smaller, there, there are makers, um, guys that make their own tools and that sell them and they have, they're more expensive than these, but you can obviously tell a difference. They're going to cut better. They're going to be overall a better balanced knife and they're going to be a lot more better. Of course, they're going to be more money, but if you are moving up in the ranks of tooling, that is something you definitely want to invest in. And someday I would like to get an actual really good swivel knife. Um, but like since me going to the bags, I don't do that much tooling. So the first thing, like I said, is you need is a swivel knife. And then the second thing that you need is a beveler. And you can get these from Tandy. They have thousands, like hundreds of them of different like bevelers and stuff like that. You can get them from Springfield. And then also the people who make the swivel knives and sell them, they also make their own bevelers. You can also get so the Tandy ones, I do have to say, their standard tool line or their standard bevelers um, are not going to be the best. They're not going to, they're not going to tool the best. They're, you know, obviously going to get kind of what you pay for. Um, these probably, I think they run around ten dollars a piece for retail. My price, I think they're like around five. Um, I get the elite pricing or business because I have a business license. So this one here, this isn't. I, neither of these are the ones that I use, and I, I actually should have probably brought that one up. But as you can, I don't know if you can see here, this one is a checkered beveler, it's a square one. Um, and this would be used for basically once you carve with your swivel knife, you're going to use this to basically um, make your carving stand up or like be recessed in or, you know, go down. Um, this is what you do all your basically detailing with. So for bevelers, they make two different types. They make a checkered and then they make a smooth, which... Let me show you here if I can get this one. These are both Tandy ones, by the way. Um, and there we go. I don't know if you can really tell, but it's smooth here versus the other one that was checkered. So, um, like I said, the standard Tandy ones, um, they're honestly, you get what you pay for. They're not the best. They do have a step up um, with their new Pro line, and I used those. Those are the bevelers that I use now um, that you can honestly tell a difference. The slope in the beveler, which, let me see if I can show you guys again, if I can get this camera to... Okay, see how this sloped right here? And see how this is like, um, how it goes like up and down, it's basically kind of like a step or whatever. This one will not tool the best, I personally found out, because this, it's not sloped enough or this is not as tall. The pro ones will have a longer area here and it'll be more upright and it honestly tools a lot better. The, um, the tooling is a lot more cleaner, you have a lot less bumps and that is what I like. And on the topic of bumps and stuff, when you're starting out tooling, it's obviously not going to be perfect, picture perfect, and it's not going to be smooth because you got to get used to the rhythm of it. you got to get used to holding your tools and all of that. And it, it depends on the leather that you're working with, if you case the leather right. Um, but what I was going to say is I recommend when you're starting out tooling to start with a checkered beveler. Smoother bevelers are going to kind of be harder for beginners because since you're getting used to that rhythm and holding the tool and everything that goes with tooling, a checkered beveler, honestly, is going to allow you to make more mistakes and it's going to be easier to cover up, because, cover up because it has the checkers and it's just, it's kind of hard to explain, um, but it's basically going to be better for a beginner because it's going to hide more mistakes. Um, the smoother beveler, you can use it, um, but you're going to have to go over it a lot and, you know, sometimes when you make those little nicks and marks, they're not going to come out. Um, I do know some people who will actually tool with a checkered beveler first, or... I think they do a, no, yeah, they do checkered first and they go back through with a smooth. I don't know why, but I just use checkered mostly. Um, I'll do, like, I usually do checkered, like, for the outside tooling. Like, if I'm doing a feather, I'll do it on the outside and then the inside, like, for the stem, I will use a smooth beveler because I don't really want the checkered on the inside of the feather. So those bevelers, and there's all different shapes, there's all different sizes. Like this is honestly like a medium one here that I have. Um, come on camera, where are you at? This one is probably like a medium size one. Um, I actually use one that's smaller than this and then one that's even smaller than that because this one, 
right here probably would be good for bigger carving and since I usually carve a lot of smaller things I need to use a smaller beveler because um, the bigger the beveler the harder it's going to be to get inside those detailed and finer areas. So those are the bevelers and then the other thing that you're going to need is some type of hammer or in my case, I use a mallet, a wooden mallet. It's weighted, actually. This one is a pound. Um, they do, I think, go all the way up to three pounds, but since I'm small and <laughs> a wuss, I, there's no way I could hold a three constantly and tap. You know, my arm would just fall off. I mean, this one even gets heavy. This is an Al Stolman brand. Um, I get it from Tandy. As you can see, if I can get this to zoom in or... I don't know if you can really see. I think it's too bright, but it is totally tore up here. Um, it has definitely been well loved, <laughs> and um, but I use this. I really like it. You can obviously get better mallets, um, better balanced ones from other makers, the ones that make the swivel knives and the bevelers. You know, pe there's people that make tools to sell, um, but if you're starting out, this I think runs. Oh, I think this runs about. Um, this one was I think about fifty or seventy for me, um, elite, and I think it's more than that for um, retail. Uh, but you know, I mean, it just this is going to be your mostly your main tool. I mean, you're going to need this for because I use this not only for um, for carving or for tooling. I also use it for when I'm hitting my punches and all that. And I like the weight in this because like when I'm hitting my punches, it definitely helps um, having the weight to back that up and you get a better clean punch. Um, so yeah, so you can definitely, um, Tandy does sell, you don't have to start out with this. I didn't start out with this. I started out honestly when I first went to my first tooling class, I came in with a regular hammer, like a, like a rubber hammer. And I was horrible. And the guy looked at me like, do you really think that's going to work? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Of course, I knew nothing about tooling. So I started out with like their basic hammer or basic mallet. And then I, <clears throat> excuse me, still battling this darn cold. I moved up to this one. So you definitely don't have to start out with this, but it's definitely something to in, uh, invest in and to get later on down the road. So once you have those three main tools, those are the three main ones. <clears throat> now I'm going to talk about in order before you and I will show you guys how to do all this in next week's video before you do any type of tooling you're going to want to case the leather um, there's a lot of different um, ways to do this I personally um, I use a spray bottle and I will casing is basically getting the leather wet and preparing it for tooling um, I will spray my leather with this with water um, I will wait for it to soak all the way in for the leather to start turning back to the natural color that it was and then I will start tooling. You don't want to start tooling when the leather's too wet because your impression will not be right <coughs> and then you don't want to tool when it's too dry. You want to get it just right and it's something that you kind of have to learn, you kind of have to play with and it's going to depend on what other leather, whatever leather you're using, every single brand is different, every single finish. I mean, if you get a, a Craftsman, which is Tandy's like lowest grade of leather versus like the um, European sides, which is like their highest grade, you're going to have completely different results with casing. Some people will add, um, I think, sal soap to this. They'll add something to the water. Um, some people will actually spray it and then they will freeze the leather, put it in their freezer and then take it out. Um, there's so many different ways. If you go on leather forums, you can look and see, uh, what all different ways that people do this. I just use this and that's what I've had okay luck with. Um, like I said, I'm not the best tooler at all. It's not my specialty, but I mean, I do know some of, some of the basics. Another thing I'm going to tell you with on the swivel knife is with the swivel knife being an actual knife, you're going to want to definitely keep it sharp because if it's not sharp, you're obviously going to be able to tell in your tooling. And I'll show you guys this all next week, um, but it's going to be hard. It's not going to drag through the leather as smooth as a sharp blade will. It will start to kind of skip and jump and you'll definitely be able to tell you won't be able to get as deep of a cut. Um, so what 
uh, people use to sharpen their blade is this stuff. It's called Jewelers Rouge. You can get it at um, Tandy. You can get it several different other places. And what you're going to do is you're going to strop the blade, which that's what it's called. You're going to get, they do sell stropping boards, um, but you can also take a piece of leather, rub this on it. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the blade, you're going to keep it at an upright angle like this because you're um, the blade itself comes to a point and you're not going to want to round that off you got to be very very careful and you're just going to pull it back quickly probably around 20 times and then you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the other side um, they do sell I know Tandy or Springfield they sell a little device um, that basically will hold your blade at the right angle so when you're learning how to strop um, you don't mess up your blade and don't make it um, dull or make it uh, off you know make sure it stays the same um, I just basically I had to learn how to do it over several times and like I could kind of tell right now like the blade's not going to be sharp enough to like cut your finger if you run it over it but I can tell that it's definitely dull in the middle I can definitely tell that it's this one needs to be struck so that is that. I um, am very excited to show you guys. I hope this helped out a lot. I hope just showing you guys the basic parts of tooling. Also, um, I forgot to mention, when you are tooling, when you're doing any type of carving, any type like that, you want to do it on a granite surface. They sell the granite slabs. That is definitely going to give you the most cleanest, the most sharpest tooling versus doing it on a table that bounces or one that is, you know, doesn't really have the sturdiness of a granite. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, um, if you want to know, uh, a link to a specific item I will definitely give it to you guys um, if you have any like I said any other questions let me know and I look forward next week to kind of showing you guys the basics of tooling now please know I'm not an expert at all I am not the best at tooling but I'll just kind of show you guys what I've learned along the way and what has worked for me so thank you guys so so much for watching again please give us a thumbs up if you like it if you want to stay tuned for more leather fun Friday videos I love doing them and sharing my knowledge with you guys you guys give me so much and I love to give back and also if you want to subscribe we are almost to a thousand subscribers we're like I think one away from like 990 I think so we got like 11 more people and or maybe 21 I can't remember yeah I think we're like a like 11 more people till we hit a thousand I'm like oh my god that's just amazing I can't believe that many people follow my channel so thank you guys so so much for watching I love y'all and I will see you on the next one bye